Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Network. We're talking about secure cloud computing, and we were just getting into specific examples. I wanted to uh, toss it over to Brian Merrick at Department of State. Uh, give us an example. You top lined a lot of stuff that you all are doing over there. Can you give us one example that you'd like to highlight? Sure. So, you know, we've been doing some pretty interesting work based on complex mission needs. You know, one of the projects we've been working with one of our key partners on is around solving a lot of the refugee data processing problems around the world. Uh, and so we actually are, are working with them on a really incredible hybrid project uh, where they have folks in the field that are processing that refugee data uh, outside of internet range uh, and then uploading that data uh, once they hit connectivity that comes back to one of our SaaS platforms and then moving that data back out again to different on-prem environments uh, for storage and further sharing and also other IS environments for analytics purposes. Uh, with a great security wrap around that. And, you know, as we, we heard earlier, uh, really that, that single identity solution is critical because uh, identity is now the, the new perimeter, if you will, in the cloud, especially when we're managing hybrid environments. And in this example, uh, for the most part, the uh, on-prem environment is the one that lacks permanence. It's the cloud that's really getting the focus in a lot of this effort uh, because of the, the speed of delivery and the ease of sharing of that data as well. So. Really excited about that. And I think we're gonna see a lot more hybrid efforts. And the things that, that are also working behind the background to fuel that, as we've heard from other panelists, automation is key. And so we're able to scale these efforts by leveraging automation. Uh, we've improved a lot of our deployment processes, uh, you know, moving, as I said, towards our DevSecOps model, where now we're uh, deploying code on daily release schedules uh, for some of our platforms. So really making a lot of progress and there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I think one of the other key things we, we focused on behind the scenes that's, that's fueling all of this is improving, uh, breaking down those data silos that existed across different stakeholder groups. We've done a lot of partnering with our CDO shop and really the, the experiences we got out of the, uh, the COVID uh, response, we really were able to showcase how cloud can securely make data a, a force multiplier in the decision support process uh, and also in moving critical uh, information requirements quickly. And so with that, we're partnering with our security colleagues uh, and many of our other key data owners uh, so that we can securely manage uh, APIs better uh, so we can do a lot more data sharing and uh, basically centralize uh, those data stores in single locations that can be shared to multiple locations uh, from that. So that's something we're really excited about. A lot of work to be done in that, but we've, we've definitely started that process. What a fantastic use case and so important, especially right now and a good example of how you can implement something very quickly and uh, uh, do it securely and uh, unlock all this capability, uh, which I'm sure is music to Ryan's ear. So Ryan, give us an example. That one was a fantastic use case. Give us another example of where Snowflake is, uh, you know, uh, unlocking these capabilities uh, in a secure cloud environment. Yeah, right on. Thanks, Luke. Um, and and I appreciate the tee up there, Brian Merrick. This is uh, this is fortuitous. Um, I think in a couple of areas, and I, I think what I'd like to highlight is also I think an end goal for all of us uh, is is not only our federal partners, but then how do our federal partners securely share information with you know the citizenry, right? So that they Bingo. can go. Yeah, as, as well informed as possible. So I'm seeing some very interesting use cases uh, from a federal perspective uh, in the healthcare and law enforcement areas. Um, and, and much like uh, Matt alluded to, can't get into some of the specifics, but the specifics I can get into started back, you know, last year with the state of California and COVID-19, right? Um, went about rapidly deploying Snowflake um, and visualization tools on top of that for all 58 counties in the state of California. I, I'm not a native Californian, so I didn't know how many counties there were, but in case you're wondering, that's how many there are. Okay. Um, and so what's interesting is, is now they were able to plat, you know, store a multitude of data sources on a single platform, um, including things like you know, the current number of COVID-19 cases across the state, number of suspected cases, um, how many are receiving treatment in a hospital ICU, number of hospital beds and ventilators in use, uh, as well as demographics of COVID-19 patients. And they're able to do that securely. And I think that's an interesting nuance here when we talk about security uh, and folks like the, my Okta colleagues and, and, and Palo Alto Networks co colleagues can, can attest to is that you know, th there's, there's inherent security risk in sharing data um, when you're moving things around, moving flat files around, you know, yet alone, you know, getting into things like single source of data and single source of truth. 
Um, but moving moving files is inherently risky. Uh, the maintenance of API security also, uh, but being able to so store a single secure copy of data and have folks share that uh, without moving the data is is something uniquely uh, that you know something unique that Snowflake brings to bear that I think is helping uh, break down also some of those silos when we talk about data sharing, uh, especially as it pertains to our federal uh, customers, and really raising the confidence of the data owners to share the data, if you will, right? Because they know it's uh, the, the, the confidence is there because the security is there to allow that to happen. And all of a sudden these things start to fuse together. Dave, how about at USDA, uh, you all started very early on in the, in the cloud journey with farmers.gov, as I recall, you're doing a ton of stuff over there now. And again, I wanna thank you for everything that USDA is doing for the uh, citizenry, uh, along with everyone else on the panel, of course. Tell us about a specific program you'd like to highlight at USDA. Thanks, Luke. We've had many high profile IT modernization efforts, uh, many of which have leveraged cloud at its core uh, to enable differentiating uh, enhancements. Um, for instance, Ask USDA leveraged a, a cloud based CRM to aggregate data and input across many programs, mission areas, and geographies to accelerate issue identification, trend identification, and then act on them. Uh, another example was our high profile CDO dashboards. Those leverage cloud based data analytics, data visualization tools, and again, a uh, different model, more internally focused, but accelerated decision making, trend identification, um, and better, better business decisions. Finally, you mentioned uh, farmers.gov. And yes, that did begin several years ago. Uh, the cloud architecture at its core, the SaaS platform, enabled modular year after year improvements for the benefits of the, the agricultural stakeholders and the better execution of the agricultural supply chain. The cloud approach, the cloud architecture enabled this to be done without any disruption of the platform and continued year after year improvement uh, because of that cloud-based SaaS approach. And scaling uh, on the usage of it, that's a fantastic yep. use for it's a very uh, 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 comprehensive uh, set of use stories there. So thank you very much. Brian, how about at Okta? Can you give us an example of a, a specific program that you'd like to highlight uh, that's allowing this cloud, uh, secure cloud adoption to happen? Yeah, sure. As uh, you know, Ryan and, and Matt kind of alluded to, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to name specific uh, customers for, for, uh, you know, respecting their, uh, their privacy around their security. Uh, but really, you know, the, the things kind of, there was a general theme that, uh, you know, we, we saw at Okta as, as folks shifted and, you know, through the COVID responses and really shifted to that remote, uh, remote uh, work uh, model. Um, there was a lot of both government and private organizations that really had to accelerate changes in their IT infrastructure to really support those scenarios. And, uh, you know, Okta had a, a bunch of customers that, that really had to accelerate changes that, that they had planned that were going to take, you know, months, you know, at best to happen over a weekend. I mean, that, that was a type of like nimbleness that we saw in, in folks being able to use the, the cloud and, and to really be able to transform their, their IT infrastructure and their business kind of, you know, within, within days of, of having to send everybody home. So, I mean, I think those are like some critical, you know, kind of things that the cloud enabled, uh, you know, our customers, both on the government and, and the private sector side to, to be able to achieve. Uh, the, other, the other thing is, you know, we had several agencies, um, you know, some on the DOD side and, and some on the, you know, kind of the homeland side uh, that, that stood up both, um, portals or information sharing portals uh, to be able to work with local agencies and, and state agencies in, in collecting data around, uh, you know, COVID response or, or, you know, everything from like hospital bed availability. And, you know, Okta was critical in that, those areas and being able to determine, you know, and who has access to what, right? To ensure that the right people had access at the right times to that information. Uh, as well as, you know, they, they designed mobile apps to be able to give to folks that were in the responding, you know, um, units that went into certain areas uh, so that they could both track kind of what they were seeing 
but also be able to track, uh, you know, their own kind of state, right? Were they experiencing, uh, you know, COVID symptoms, things like that? And so when you're starting to deal with information about healthcare and, and sharing that information and collecting that information, it's, it's critical that you have good security around that and that you have a good, strong authentication boundary so that, uh, you know, folks aren't able to just you know, share, you know, see stuff that they shouldn't be able to see and, and really be able to protect the, the citizens data that we're collecting and, and, and whatnot. So SAS was a, was a critical part of those things. And I think really it showed the power of, of cloud computing and, and really it should be, you know, it's a great story for all the cloud vendors that were involved in those, those solutions. Sure, the entire ecosystem uh, able to come together and enable uh, this capability, one, very rapidly, two, extremely sensitive information that had to be uh, shared, right? And uh, that's not a simple thing to do unless you can think carefully about it. We're going to switch over to priorities. I'm going to ask Brian Merrick over at Department of State. Uh, you all have a lot of things going on over there. You got a new sheriff in town. I understand my former colleague, Keith Jones. And I know you all are up to a lot of things. Give us your top two or three priorities for this year that you're trying to tackle. Sure. So, so sort of uh, as I alluded to before, uh, governance and security, huge. So really trying to get a, a good handle as we're maturing in the cloud environment in terms of how we're going to up our game from the security perspective and how we're going to properly govern those decisions on which technologies we use and how we implement them uh, most effectively across the enterprise. Uh, so a lot of work going on in that space. We're looking to streamline the governance process, fully automate it. We've already begun work on that. And there's more work to be done. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, going across that, that multi-layered enterprise, um, there are a lot of nooks and crannies that we're working through so we can improve that process. And then on the security side, continuing rolling out uh, single identity. Um, that's really been groundbreaking for us, uh, being able to then manage internal and external users access to our data. Uh, we definitely want to explore making that capability a lot more robust and get more granular uh, about the uh, different control settings that we can put in place to, to secure our data and manage our risk better. Uh, and certainly a lot of work going on in the monitoring space, um, data aggregation analytics space around that, uh, really moving that, that DevSecOps principle together on the SEC side, uh, something we're, we're focused on. And then I think the other second uh, major priority really uh, uh, from Keith especially, and I think we all echo that, is the need to truly move into DevSecOps. It is a cultural shift. Uh, you know, it's going to be a, a challenge. And like I say, I mean, I, the, the department has moved in that direction in different degrees of maturity. And we're seeing the programmatic side move much more rapidly because of the pace of change the business dictates. And so, you know, certainly want to support that and we want to encourage that and we want to speed that up. So some of the things we're looking at is really creating a robust, um, you know, agile coaching and training capability um, that we can spread. Uh, we're also doing a lot of outreach across the enterprise so that we can you know, really showcase use cases that uh, are, are using this to full advantage. And also really looking to, once again, use automation uh, to modernize our tools. You know, obviously single pane of glass is not really what we're looking for. I mean, that's, that's a bit challenging, honestly, across the disparate cloud environments. We are truly multi-cloud. Um, there are things that work best, uh, you know, especially around orchestration uh, for native tools. But what we're really looking to do is, is modernize and automate our testing, our CI/CD processes at the enterprise level as offerings, and also the tools that practitioners use to actually manage their agile efforts uh, and manage it differently. And so, you know, that culture change has begun. A lot of work to do. Um, one of the things we're we're really going to focus on this year, uh, as well with that, is trying to bring that agile culture change to the field. Uh, and so, we have a project that we're going to be kicking off in a, in a couple months here to actually go into a post and soup to nuts. Uh, you know, look at what we can do to build apps with them, uh, to put them in a cloud environment and modernize them and get them onto that DevSecOps footing so that it's sustainable in a partnership. Once again, that shared responsibility model, uh, because, you know, there aren't a lot of resources that each individual post. And so I think with that model, we're going to be successful in, in really, you know, improving the game uh, you know, that we've been playing. And I think we're going to get a lot more effective outcomes that way. Sounds like you've got you really laid the groundwork out to, to really start to accelerate on a lot of these capabilities, which is uh, fantastic to hear that. And I'm sure the uh, the citizenry and the uh, diplomatic corps, et cetera, are going to uh, love to, to get uh, a hold of those new capabilities. Matt, how about at Palo Alto Networks? Can you give us a, uh, uh, you know, what's the top priority out there? 
Absolutely. You know, I mentioned before our, you know, our Prisma Cloud platform is currently uh, FedRAMP moderate. And, you know, we work with a lot of agencies, but, you know, what we're hearing is, is, hey, you know, we need, we, we, we want to use it, but we need to be higher, right? So that's why I said we're, we're moving towards high right now. And then from our, for our partners within DOD, uh, we're moving towards a, an IL-4. So that's going to be a big focus for us is just getting the platform, uh, you know, the Prisma Cloud platform where it needs to be for our agency partners. Um, so that, that's, a, that's kind of a, I guess, more of a somewhat of an internal piece. But I think the other part of it, and Brian Merrick uh, mentioned this, is that you know, we're with our Prisma Cloud platform, we are helping agencies already to not only secure their cloud infrastructures, but also their entire uh, development pipeline, right? So DevSecOps, some people call it Sec DevOps. Uh, this is why we made a recent acquisition of a company called BridgeCrew. And you know, agencies can go out today and download BridgeCrew for free. It's open source tool, it's bridgecrew.io. But this is a huge theme uh, for us as we help agencies leverage cloud, but also as they, they're really struggling with that massive talent gap, right? The resources that know cloud and DevSecOps really well, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of them. And because of that, they are really, really expensive. So one of the things that, that we're really focused on and we've been focused on is helping agencies to leverage all of those amazing capabilities that exist in the cloud, but be able to do it in a way where you don't have to go out and hire, you know, n number of different specialists. You can mm -hmm. use the Prisma Cloud Platform to have a single place where you can manage all of those security policies, both for the cloud infrastructure, as well as the software development pipeline. So those right. are just some areas that we're really focused on uh, as we look at the, the next 12 months. Sure, and every uh, every uh, organization wants to certainly focus more of their time on the mission, less on the pliers and wires. Brian, how about uh, at uh, the FedRAMP office? What's the top couple of priorities for you this year? You got a lot of stuff in the hopper right now. Right. So, you know, we're, we're continually focused on our and making sure that the federal government has uh, commercial secure commercial, commercial cloud services to use. Um, you know, that is that is our day to day. Um, you know, also working to uh, find ways to <clears throat> As cloud service providers develop technology and as agencies adopt, uh, being being in the middle of that, being at the nexus of that is, you know, is a challenge for us to make sure that we can keep up with the uh, with making sure that's secure. Um, and so, in addition to that, it's you know the priorities of automating and and getting us onto Rev Five or, or what we're thinking about. Sure. Uh, it sounds like you're laser focused on those uh, specific priorities, and that certainly makes a lot of sense that you need to be able to do that. So I'm happy to hear that. All right. We're going to take another short break, and we're going to be back in just a moment. You're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Network.